Santiago Alvarez account. So first, let us know quickly who is Santiago Alvarez. So, Santiago Barata Alvarez was a revolutionary general and a founder and honorary president of the first Directorate of Nationalista Party, and also known as Lat ng Apoy or Lightning of Fire because of his inflamed uh, bravery and dedication as commander of Cavite's famous battles, he was celebrated in the present-day Cavite city as a hero of the Battle of Talahican. So, Santiago Alvarez's account, the account of the Harris Convention is found in Chapter 32 of Jan Santiago's Alvarez Memoirs. Like Ricardo, Alvarez was a direct participant and witness to the events that occurred in the election. The Heras Convention is found in Chapter 32 of General Santiago Alvarez Memories. The Tejeros Convention, also known as the Tejeros Assembly and the Tejeros Congress, was a meeting held on March 22, 1897, between Katipunan factions of Magdiwang Magdalo in San Francisco de Malabon, Cavite. That resulted in the creation of new revolutionary government that took charge of the Philippine Resolution placing the Katipunan. Jacinto Lumbreras of Magdiwang, who had served as chairman of the assembly and presided over the proceedings to that point, then refused to continue as chairman since they were to discuss replacing the Katipunan. Then Bonifacio should preside as the father of the Katipunan and the revolution. Magdalo seated at the, at the head table were Messrs. Baldemero Aguinaldo, Daniel Serona, and Kaye. Cayetano Topasiano. It must be mentioned that before the assembly was convinced, Secretary War Ariston Villanueva of Magdi Magdiwang Council received the confidential information that Mr. Daniel Terona of Magdalo faction was set to undermine the proce proceedings of assembly and that he had already succeeded in, in joining many among the Magdiwang leaders to, al to ally with him. Secretary Villanueva kept silent, but nevertheless alerted Captain General Apoy, who had troops in readiness for any sudden event eventuality. The other reporter already explained in the previous slide that Lumbera said that Katipunan holds the authority over the island. It is obeyed and respected by all because it stands for freedom, brotherly love, and well-run government. As well, Lumbera explained the K, the letter K in the middle of the sun in Katipunan flag used in revolution stood for Kalayaan. The Katipunan, which literally translates to society or association, began on July 7, 1892. Their war stand as the red flag with three white K in the horizontal alignment. K in the middle of the sun in the Katipunan flag stand for Kalayaan or highest and most respectable society of the son of the people. Mr. Surbriano de las Alas spoke again. K is not an indicate whether the revolutionary government was democratic or not. Bonifacio replied that from the rank and file to the highest level, the Katipunan was united in its respect for universal brotherhood and equality of men. It was risking bloodshed and life itself in its struggle against the king in order to establish and sovereign and free government. In short, stand for people's sovereignty, not government lent only by one or two. Labiera gave speech because Katipunan member was having a trouble. Bonifacio agreed and sympathized in their proposal. Because of the glamour for the approval for the establishment, a government of the Philippine Republic, the chair was proceeded to prepare for an election for the following According to Santiago Alvarez's account, they were held a meeting between Magdalo and Magdiwang to discuss about the defense of Cavite against Spanish during the Philippine Revolution. So the election of the result was, the president was Emilio Aguinaldo, which was Magdalo, the vice president was Mariano Trias, which was 
Magdiwang, the Minister of Finance was Baldomero Aguinaldo, which was Magdalo, the Minister of Welfare was Mariano Alvarez, which was Magdiwang, the Minister of Justice was Severino de las Alas, which is Magdiwang, the Captain General was Arturio Ricarte, which was Magdiwang. The Supremo Bonifacio appointed General Atermio Ricarte as the secretary. When the votes for president were counted, Mr. Emilio Aguinaldo won over Mr. Andres Bonifacio, the Supremo. The winner was acclaimed by applause and shout of Mabuhay. Then they proceeded to the election of a vice president. Severino de las Alas remarked that Inasmuch as Andres Bonifacio had secured the second largest number of votes in the election for president, he should be proclaimed vice president. No one expressed a wish to speak in favor or against the suggestion of De Las Alas. Wherefore, the chairman ordered that the election will be preceded. So, according to what I read about Santiago Alvarez account, the president officer, the Supremo Bonifacio, ruled that the election be continued for vice president, where is Maria Mariano Trias won over Mr. Mariano Alvarez, and General Vivora was elected captain over General Ape. In Santiago, Santiago Alvarez account, Mr. Baldomero Aguinaldo wants to finish the election before it got so dark, so he suggested that all the people that vote will go in one side of the hall and other side is the against. Mr. Emiliano R. D. Dios was elected for Secretary of War. So, Mr. Andres Bonifacio, the Secretary of the Interior, won over Mr. Mariano Alvarez. And with that, the crowd shouted Mabuhay. And Mr. Daniel Tirona suggested that the order should be restored. That's why he spoke out. And one among them there is a lawyer, and his name is Mr. Jose del Rosario. And they consider the last position because he has no credentials to show attesting to any education. because of its stands for freedom, freedom of the press and tolerance as well as 